and welcome back to Source Fed Nerd. This is Philip Molina. And I'm Sam Basher, and Pokemon fans, listen up. There's been an auction just down the street in Beverly Hills where a super rare Pokemon card sold for some big bucks. Like, really big bucks. Like, I could pay off my student loans with this card. I could pay off my car with this card twice over. What we should really do, though, is like maybe like buy a little small plot of land and then open a puppy sanctuary? Hell yeah. <laughs> I think we killed it. What we're saying is that one Pokemon card sold for over $50,000. Eh, $54,970 to be exact. Yeah. You don't have glasses. Eh. Do they poke their eyes when they do it? <laughs> if you're looking at this card and you're like, confused, yeah, it's okay. It's a mint condition Pikachu Illustrator card that was a prize for fans who won an illustration contest held by the Koro Koro manga. It's believed that less than 40 of these cards were ever given out and only 10 are even known to still be around. And guess what? But, I mean, this card apparently sold for almost double this amount two years ago. Based on this eBay listing, it looks like another Pikachu Illustrator card. Uh, <laughs> It looks like another Pikachu Illustrator card sold for $90,000. God, that number hurts. Please don't tell me that this is real. Sam, we know this world is a weird and ridiculous place. How can a Pokemon card be valued at such a high price? You could buy these fuckers at a gas station. I know that this is an exception, but still. Was Pokemon Go that big of a deal that it would bump this card's value up to 50K? No one's playing that game anymore. I love that this is definitely like some billionaire dad out there. He's trying to like reconnect with his like estranged son over Christmas, mm -hmm. but like the kid's not gonna want it. No, man. it's it's over. You can't and even you, read it. You can't buy your kid's love. Yeah, no, a little bit. I'm gonna explain how these things are valued. So just go ahead and pause the video and pull out those dresser drawers and flip them over and give them a little shake because it's time to whip out your sweet sweet poker stacks and poker cards. We're gonna tell you if you're about to be poker rich. <laughs> Which is kind of like being regular rich, except for you can only say money, money a lot. Money, money. Money, money. Money, money. First off, the best way to get an accurate value is to look up that specific card online, but here's how to identify which cards are even worth checking out. The biggest indicator of a potential high value card is its rarity. Luckily, the card has a rarity symbol in the bottom right corner next to the card number. If you've got a circle, sorry to say, that's a basic B of a card, real common. Now you got a diamond. Ooh, that's an uncommon card. Unfortunately, it's about as special as real life diamonds, cause like, yeah, they're nice and all, but like, it's not like no one has one. The exception is if your diamond card was printed between 1999 and 2000. Those are first edition cards you got. Ooh boy. What you're really hoping for is a card with a star printed on it. If your star has an H next to it for hollow foil or three little stars on it, oh boy, it's time to drop out of school and put a down payment on a boat. No, no, no card is worth enough to do that. Say no to down payments on boats. It's a waste of money. By the way, though, if your card does have a weird symbol that I did not mention, then you got a funky weirdo card. Or maybe your parents bought you like knockoff Pico Man cards and this is how you're finding out. And I'm so sorry I can't make your parents love you more. Oops, side note, any holographic cards or reverse holographic cards, basically if your card's got a real shininess to it, it's worth setting aside and checking its value. Another sign of potential value is a funky little name. Like normally it should say something like Pikachu level 12. But if your card says level X or Legend. Ooh. Maybe there's a star there. These are all good signs. These could be worth hundreds of bucks. Ooh, perfect down payment for a boat. No! You can't stop what's already happened. Also look at the special SP logos at the bottom left of the artwork. Oh, and keep in mind, if you have a legend card, it actually takes two cards to portray the full legendary Pokemon's artwork. That's fancy. If you're looking through your cards and you ain't found no shiny cards or stars and you think your cards ain't worth diglet, there's a little bit of hope. A little bit. If they are from that first generation of cards, often indicated by the phrase Wizards of the Coast, which is so cool. Uh -huh. at the bottom, then it could potentially be worth like a hundred bucks. You just need a first edition stamp on the left of the artwork. It's a little one in a circle with edition in fancy curvy word art style around it. Ooh, art. And the box that art is in, by the way, it should not have a drop shadow on it. It can't have one. It's not legit if it has a drop shadow. If it doesn't, you got yourself a shadowless card and that means it's legit. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> also, that collector number at the bottom, sometimes it shows that you have a higher number card than that the collection supposedly contains. Good sign that you have a secret card that could be worth some polka dough. Oh, and if there's no number, that's a really early Japanese print, which sometimes matters. A little a Japanese prince. A little Japanese prince, yeah. <laughs> no number, it's a Japanese <laughs> prince, prince and he must be worshipped. You know, he's gotta really be released from the card. <laughs> yeah, Finally, if your card is just like weird as hell, like it has art printed all over the whole thing, that's a full art card, or if the back doesn't look like the other cards, that's a world championship card, those cards could be worth like a dozen dollars. Whoa, enough for a toy bow. Fine. Now, all this information is only a first step, because if your card looks like shit, because you didn't keep it in those fancy clear plastic card sleeves and every nerdy kid's favorite toy, a three-ring binder, then you might have destroyed much of the card's value. 
But who knows, Sam? I shoved all mine into a shoebox. And my cat pissed on it. <laughs> to mark it. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? Throw that sucker up on eBay and maybe another sucker will buy it. Here, here. Here. So to sum up, if you think your card's special, just Google it. Let us know if you have any questions down below. Be sure to like this video, share it, and subscribe. I'm Sam Basher. Bill Molina. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. Another little high five, but we'll be soft. Oh, oh God, I just hate killing me. Well, these. I have half of him. Oh, God. Confectioner's Glaze, Grigio, Midnight Sun, Back Three School, Kiki's Delight, Hamburg, Coin. Oh, you're fucked. Dracarys. Explosive. Cox! <laughs>